Hey guys, I just wanted you guys to see this video on how questioning people in the interrogation room can influence their confessions and the information they have to put in them and also even their own memories of what happened. So let's get into it. But the bottom line is the same. You're trying to go more towards fact and away from opinion and made up stuff. I want you to look at this footage. The man in the video is Kenneth Osborne, who in 2008 was arrested and convicted of kidnapping and murder. And he was sent to jail for the rest of his life. And I want you to see what happened in his interrogation. They have satellites that are over our head right now that keep constant 24 hour surveillance of everything that goes on. And I've got these photographs at the time of the 28th, the day that she disappeared. And it's, it's got a white truck on 43 Canal Road. And can it's your truck. So what they did is they took a vehicle that was similar to Kenny's, parked it out there, and somehow were able to get an overview shot of that crime scene, suggesting that his vehicle was able to be pictured during the purported crime. And that was untrue. They used a phony picture of a truck that looked like his near the site of the crime to convince him that he was there. I don't even think they realize how messed up and unacceptable that is. There are countless studies that show that if you give someone evidence of something that didn't happen and it looks realistic enough, it will actually cause them to fabricate a memory. One of my favorite studies in this field is by Kimberly Wade and it's called A Picture is Worth a Thousand Lies, using false photographs to create false childhood memories. In this study, they showed a bunch of people who had never been on a hot air balloon in their lives a picture of them as a child on a hot air balloon. It was completely photoshopped. And in 50% of cases, people recalled the day and they gave their experience and they talked about how it was even if it wasn't even a real thing. The reason for this is because our memory is a highly flawed system. It's built for practicality, not for accuracy. So very often, especially if there's a lot of emotions involved, or if it was a little while ago, we, we take in those emotions, we take our creativity, our imagination, we take memories from other events, and we could fabricate things and we could swear to remember things that never actually happened. So when you're in an interrogation and you're showing a guy a picture that is not real, you could be causing something in his head that never happened. So here are two ways to avoid this at all costs. First, be excessively critical. If something feels even a little bit wrong, stop and think about it. Ask for more evidence. Ask them those questions we talked about earlier. How do you know? Why do you say that? Get all the facts and if it feels wrong, don't accept someone else's opinion, form your own, especially in sensitive conversations like an interrogation. Second counter is that people who are exaggerating or fabricating, especially on this level, are also lying and we can see indicators of deception all over their behavior. So for this, an indication that Jerry Holman is lying is when he says um, it's realistic. Like, that's not what you would say if he was actually telling the truth. You'd be like, this is real life, dude. This is, this, you know, like, this is the truth. This is what really happened. Saying this is realistic implies that it's fabricated. Like, that's what realistic means is, like, something that is not true, but it looks true or something like that, you know? And so that's an indication that Jerry Holman is lying, in my opinion. Let's keep going. So this next one is the main reason why originally I felt that Richard Allen was innocent. And furthermore, when Jerry Holman was investigating him and he was saying that this bullet is yours, like, I'm not the one that has a bullet there. And Richard Allen's like, neither am I. And he's like, I'm not the one that said this, this and that. And he, Richard Allen's like, neither am I. And so, in my opinion, that is a sign of him being innocent. Just like with um, what time he told him that he was there or whatever. Like, somebody who already knew what had happened would have made up some story or would have made sure that they put themselves 
in a completely different place during that time frame because they are aware of when it happened and everything. Like, I don't know, Ron Logan. Not saying he's guilty, but that's definitely a sign if they preemptively know to lie about what time something happened. Whereas Richard Allen did not do that. And then with the bullet, it's not like after they went to his house and they searched and they took his gun. Like, why would he not try to make up some story that about like, oh, I go out there all the time and shoot guns or like, you know, give himself an out or a reason to have his bullet there. But he's just like, no, that's not mine. That is a sign that he's innocent in my opinion. Is there any physical evidence that you know of that he was in possession of that would tie you to where he was found? No. Not at all. Okay. Is there any reason, Wesley, that you can think of that I won't be able to clear you? No. Okay. Did you kill her and not mean to? Did you I did not kill her. One of them was the presumptive question. This is a question that doesn't accuse someone, but sort of hints at them that you might have some information, and if the person is guilty, they have to re-question their entire position and their entire story. So in this case, right in the beginning, he asked him, is there any physical evidence that she might be in possession of that would tie you to what happened? Now think about what that would do in your head if you were guilty of this crime. You would think to yourself, wait, what is he talking about? Do they have some sort of physical evidence? And you might want to come up with a story to cover your butt. So you might say something like, well, you know, she borrowed my truck earlier that day, so she may have had some of my things, or she came by before she went to the bar. Just something, or, or you would hesitate, or we think they would see that. In his case, we got a direct no. If you're lying, this is a very difficult position to be in because if they do have evidence, now you really have to climb uphill. There are people right now in jail serving life sentences for a crime they did not commit because they were manipulated by someone that they trusted. So now I want to take you to how someone could possibly make false confessions even though they're not like currently being interrogated or whatever. But think about somebody who is in solitary confinement for three months and they have people antagonizing them the entire time, like former or um, cellmates or whatever. And then also the prison guards just constantly like berating them and calling them a child murderer and stuff. And then think about like, we already know that they use the read and investigative technique or interrogation technique in um that's what they're trained to do in Carroll County and um I'm sure Holman as well which is like a very aggressive um technique and so this next clip is going to show how they talk to a person and so after being in solitary confinement and having like your mind broken basically um I think it's totally plausible that he could start questioning reality and questioning like what if I did do this like maybe I did do this and I just don't remember it or even like actually think in his head that he did he must have done it you know and um so we can't possibly understand what it's like to be in that situation like everybody thinks that they would be so strong or they'd want to be in solitary you wouldn't it's literally torture like it is beyond what we could really imagine and so um this is going to show how they could put it in his head like even if he does have statements that are accurate to the crime that doesn't mean that he is actually the one that committed it and so just watch this and just watch it with an open mind I want you to see in this interrogation how often the interrogators were telling him what mindset he's in and they did it so much that they just broke down his mental state. So it's, it's possible that you're blocking that out, putting yourself down the road where you wanted to be. And you got to read that. Earlier you said it wasn't possible you were on Blade Road, you remember? You said it wasn't, it, I, I wasn't on Blade Road. Then you might opened up a little bit, didn't you? And when it opened up, you realized not only is it possible, but I was there on the late run. You're taking yourself from what you, where you didn't want to be to where you wanted to be in your mind. And you see something evil in your mind, and you try to block it out, but you have to get so evil that you can't block it out completely. So you have to replace it with something else. No, you're not. 
He was in the mind, he gave the mind right. The mind is coming around, okay? Open it up. <laughs> Open it up. The mind is coming around. I absolutely hate everything about that. In fact, remember this. Anytime someone presents their personal opinion as fact, they're attempting to manipulate you whether they know it or not. This Let's is in legal situations where you ask for a lawyer. Make this a rule in your head, never deviate, really drill it in there. If ever somebody who works in law enforcement asks you if you can go in to answer some questions, Always, always answer, I would absolutely love to the moment my lawyer gets here. Always, regardless of what's happening, it doesn't matter because you might be in there to cooperate and help them and they might seem like they're doing the same, but that is not what's happening. And as we saw, there are people spending their lives in jail because that didn't work out for them. So the moment that happens, lawyer up. Thank you guys for watching. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below and see you next time. Bye.